Fellow caregivers, there is nothing more rewarding than to watch you come together as a team in service to others. Today, I had the privilege to visit the care team in G60 on main campus. G60 is a medical intensive care unit. It is one of several in our health system dedicated to addressing the complex needs of patients with COVID-19. Placing patients into cohort ensures the best care possible. It has also resulted in outstanding innovation by our teams. Let's take a look at how the G60 team is developing best practices in the care of these patients. So we are here at G60 at the main campus. This is our intensive care unit here that is taking care of our COVID patients. So this is uh, our team here, the representatives of the team at G60. So I will just ask them to introduce themselves. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'm Ra'ed Dwayk, the chairman of the Respiratory Institute. And as you know, Tom, the Respiratory Institute has the departments of pulmonary medicine, critical care, and infectious disease, which are at the forefront of this uh, fight for this crisis, as well as allergy. I'm Carly Berlon, and I'm a registered nurse on the unit. I'm Myron Dresson, and I'm a respiratory therapist in the Pulmonary Institute. And I'm Eduardo Mireles, director of the medical ICU. I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician. It is a busy place, Red. You have been uh, such a proud advocate of our intensive care unit team. Uh, tell us what's going on over here. What are your experiences so far? Absolutely. This has uh, one of the first admissions came to this unit. Uh, and since then, they really stepped up. They've been very busy to not only take care of the patients, but also develop best practices so that we can learn from them and take it to other parts of the system how to use PPE equipment and to uh, maximize uh, the use and preservation, how to use uh, dialysis machines, IV poles, and uh, ventilator controls outside of the unit to minimize exposure. Lots of great things came out of uh, this team. You know, as I walked in, I've noticed, Carly, I've noticed that a lot of controls for the, for the patients, respiratory controls, IV poles, they're not in the in the room any longer. Correct. When did you make an adjustment? How does it work? The extensions, they did a lot of research making sure that adequate amount of medications were still getting to the patients, but we've finally brought almost all the equipment outside of the room so that it minimizes the amount of PPE that we need to use. Yeah. Was that a difficult adjustment for, for our colleagues in nursing? Very. <laughs> <laughs> we're so used to running into the room every time we hear a beep or an alarm or anything, and it's very hard to remember that we need to look outside before we look inside. Yeah. And Myron, how are these patients different than most other patients that you take care of? We still follow our basic ARDS management protocol that uh, they put in place for us here. As they come in, I mean, being fully PPE from head to toe and seeing the response from the ventilator and just watching the protocols that we have in place to treat these patients. Eduardo, you've been leading this team for, for quite some time and the spirit here is great. So you come in here, not only that people are dedicated to what they do, but they're very much engaged and this kind of sense of cohesiveness that is palpable. How did you manage to accomplish all of that? It has been years of working with the team. Uh, it has been an amazing team from nursing leadership, respiratory therapy leadership, institute leadership that has been working on how to create a family environment in which people are safe to talk and are safe to innovate and are safe to, to do the things that we do the best. And so that brings a lot of teamwork. And I would say that has been the motto for us is how do we fix it? We fix it together and we make it happen. What are the, so to say, the biggest fixes that you had to put in place? Oh, uh, oh that's a little, <laughs> the, the list is long. <laughs> well, it, it, it goes in different levels. Yeah. I, I think one of the, the major things is how to stay safe. And yes. uh, as the people were going into the room and coming out, we realized that even though we have been trained and we think we know, we you really missteps when you're coming out. So doing the body system as you're coming out of the room and having somebody catch me if I'm going wrong was a, a, one of those key fixes that, that we did here and we're making a behavior out of it. So I want to ask uh, Carly and Myron, uh, personal protective equipment, intensive care unit, COVID patients, top of mind nationwide, what are we doing differently? How are we making sure that we're keeping each other safe? As you can see, we're here in the middle of an intensive care unit. We're 
obviously none of us is wearing masks because this is a safe environment. So tell me, first, what did you do? And then how did you mobilize everyone in a team to do the right thing? So I think the, the biggest uh, advantage that we've seen was talking about safety and actually having the buddy system that we came up with. So as you go into the room, you have a buddy watching you don to make sure you're tied in the back to reduce exposure, and then doffing appropriately and making sure you're not contaminating, preventing your workers or another patient to being exposed. And to add on to what Myron said, we're updating every couple hours our managers come around they just make sure that every single patient that we have if it's a trach if it's something that we're not sure what ppe we put on for it everyone's working together to just make sure that we're all on the same page when x-ray technicians come and our respiratory therapists even our staff doctors they're being our buddies i think that's amazing everyone's working as a team yeah that, that's terrific. And right, I mean, you know, when we came in here at the very beginning, we spoke a lot about the clinical care, the way we do yeah. take care of our patients. But what is also coming uh, very, very quickly uh, as, a, as a part, integral part of what we do here is research. Can yes. you speak a little bit about the research effort? How are we trying to figure out how to take care of these patients in a more effective way through research? Absolutely. As you know, Tom, there are no approved treatments currently for yeah. COVID-19. So there are a lot of people thinking of innovative ideas to do this. And we've been, since we started this, we were inundated by requests for clinical trials. They're upward of 20 now. Okay. So what we put together is a team to vet those based on uh, their benefit to the patients, their scientific, uh, you know, um, basis and multiple other factors to make sure that we select the best trials for our patients and also to advance the science of treatment. You're also in a, in a steady contact with your ICU colleagues across the world. Can you and Eduardo speak a little bit about the connections? Who do you reach to? What have we learned as we, as we spoke with others? From the very beginning, when the first case was identified in the United States, we and the Respiratory Institute have been on high alert. Uh, we reached to people in China, people in Italy, people in the UK, and more recently, uh, we are in touch with people in New York and Washington State to learn from them how the uh, best practices. And the more and more we talk to these people, we realize that clinical care of these patients boils down to three things. Space, which you are here in the COVID unit. Staffing, you are meeting the staff and we talk about it. And stuff, and we have been talking about PPEs and ventilators. It's critical to have all these components uh, you know, available and uh, to take care of these patients. A lot has come from actually within the Cleveland Clinic. I would say that the interaction with our colleagues at other ICUs uh, through the region and within uh, to develop the protocols, to develop the way that uh, we, we behave and how we're gonna move has been integral. We did, for example, when we created the ICU management guidelines, we had a whole group of providers from the Cleveland Clinic just sit down and try to bet through all the information that is published all the time and trying to make something that makes sense for us here. One of the major, major advantages for us, the Cleveland Clinic, is functioning as a system. And from the very beginning, even before this started, uh, Dr. Cooley, our chairman of critical care, had made sure that all our MICUs in the system are integrated, they are connected, we have directors who are connected to us, so that we are always on top of uh, communication and sharing best practices, and that is, has been invaluable in, uh, in responding to this crisis. Yeah. So I would just like to ask the question to the entire group. Uh, you know, these are challenging times. We're doing a lot of things that we haven't done in the past in the ways that are different as well. How do you feel supported by, by the Cleveland Clinic, by all of us? I definitely feel supported by our team. There's always someone to lean on, whether you're having a good day or a bad day, not just during the COVID time, but especially now. Uh, we really need to lean on each other, and I feel like we can do that. Myron, as a respiratory therapist, each of these patients requires a lot of respiratory care. Yeah, and you know, it's not one person, it's a team. And uh, we rely on the nurses a lot, especially as bundling care and trying not to go into the room as much. And then for as much as the communication, every day I come in, uh, the assistant nurse managers are here asking us if we need anything. Our managers, our supervisors from the Respiratory Institute to either uh, communicate or tell us anything that changed because things are changing, you know, day to day or hour to hour and they're trying to keep us up on it um, as fast as possible. So I'm really thankful for that. Eduardo, you as a leader here in the unit. Uh, I would say that the level of support at every single level has been uh, impressive. There has been 
not one project in which we have tried to achieve something that we would have not have more people saying, I can help you do that, I can get you there. And we have achieved a lot of projects very fast just because people are trying to push together everybody's in this. Uh, I, I cannot tell you how happy I am to hear this because we have gotten through everything as a team, we'll get through this as a team as well. So thank you very much for being such an exemplary, <laughs> exemplary team. Thank you. Thank you thank for you, all you do. Thank Thanks. You. In addition to G60, we have units at Hillcrest, Fairview and Marymount Hospitals. I plan to visit them in the days ahead. As they learn new practices, we will share this information with other teams across Cleveland Clinic. Your flexibility is critical. It is a key to how we prepare for a surge of patients in the coming weeks. I am more confident than ever in our preparations. We have observed and studied this pandemic. Now, our teams are shining in their response. You are a model of excellence for others in healthcare. Thank you for your leadership and your teamwork. You are appreciated.